kids, it's time for the fishing show. Me and old Rusty's gonna go catch them down at the fishing hole. Well, you better stick around, cause you don't know what you're missing. Yeah, me and old Rusty's got that fishing affliction. Grab your hats, grab your base, don't forget your poles. We're gonna fire up that old nitro boat and head to the fishing hole. We're gonna try to catch a big one. Yeah, that's what we're wishing. Cause me and old Rusty's got that fish infliction. Yeah, me and old Rusty's got that fish infliction. Yeah. Man, and we've got it bad. Well, good morning. Quarter after four in the morning. We can only be doing one thing. We can only be taping fish and affliction. We're on our way this morning, time to attend Ford Weeby and Catfish Night. And we are going to meet Mr. Rusty Rust this morning down in, oh, outside of Nashville. And we're on our way for a day on Tim's Ford. So I am looking forward to it. This is another lake that I've never fished here in the beautiful state of Tennessee. And my, my understanding is today we're after smallmouth. So a dear friend of ours, Patrick, who we met on the first show. He sent us some pictures of his day down there and it enticed us to go on and try to catch him. So that's what we're gonna do. So glad you're here. Join Rusty, Catfish, and myself on a day at Tim's Ford. Well, folks, that was the plan. A day on Tim's Ford catching some big old smallmouth for fish and affliction. But you know, it don't always happen that way because the fact of the matter is Sometimes the fishing is tough. And that's what today's theme is, folks. Tough, but fun. And today we're gonna to show you two trips, one to Tim's Ford and one to Gunnersville, where we've gone over 500 miles to catch six fish total. That's right, folks, six fish. And when you're in the boat with somebody like Rusty Rust, who knows how to catch those fish, when he tells you it's tough, by gosh, it's tough. Now I've got a solution for these tough, but fun times at the end of this episode. But first, let's bust through the ice at Tim's Ford and see what kind of day we had that was tough but fun on Tim's Ford. Let me tell you something. You know it's cold when... <laughs> wow. <laughs> ice. Well, as you can see, we're breaking ice on Tim's Ford, and it's cold, 22 degrees. And if that's not tough enough, not only did we have to contend with the weather, but how about a broken trolling motor? You see how this is, folks? Take a look at that front. We got no trolling motor, and he's up there fishing, looking at my tackle, telling me to go look in the battery. Now the big dog rather fish than fix his trolling motor, but I wanted to fish too, so we took it apart, we fixed it, and didn't put it back together. Well, folks, here, <laughs> here's the final result. Russ, you ain't gonna even put the top on it. I ain't putting the top on it, I'm fishing. <laughs> I'm fishing, <laughs> these daggum fish have been breaking out. Oh my gosh. That's wanting to fish right there, buddy. I am not worried about it. Well, that's one thing I can say for the big dog. He loves the fish, and so don't I, even when the conditions are as tough as we experienced on Tim's Ford. We dealt with cold, we dealt with wind, we dealt with 40 degree water, and yet we were still able to come away with two fish. Well, one of us came away with two fish. Now you see, Rusty, he don't count these kind of fish because he says if they don't measure, they don't count. Well, folks, I'm counting this fish it was hard earned, it was tough conditions, and this is proof that these largemouth will hit crankbaits in this cold, cold water. That's just really something. You know what? I just think the big dog is jealous. But at the end of the day, there was no denying it had been a tough day on Tim's Ford for both of us. Under protest, here's an outro. <laughs> <laughs> under protest. This is under protest. Now look, the bottom line is there are days that just stomp on you. Am I correct? Uh, well, yes, especially when it's 
What's my best excuses today? Well, uh, we've we've heard several. We but 40, 40 degree water temp. Shoot, all the way it was, up to we did find some 48 degree. We did, but just a tough day overall, and that's the that's the truth. That is the truth, and we've been all up and down the lake pretty good. And really, all Dan really wants to say is that he caught two, and I never got a fish in the boat all day, and that's really all Dan wants to say. And that's why this show will probably make it on the air because he gets to edit and I don't. Oh no, we get we have equal equal opportunity as far as what goes on. But I believe no, you. Wait a second, now you had exactly as much chance to catch one as I did. So, well, with that said, it was very tough today. But don't worry. You know what? You can't shoot tomorrow, <laughs> but I can. I hope that you do. Fish, thanks for coming today, man. No problem. Russ. Yep. It's worth it for this one moment right here. It's very nice out. It is beautiful out. I'll tell you what, thanks for tuning in for this week's edition of Fish and Affliction. Tune in next week when Rusty says, When Rusty says, if you catch it one. <laughs> <laughs> if you put this on the air, that's it. I'm throwing you over. <laughs> All right, folks. This is not the end of the show, obviously. It's just the end of the tough times on Tim's. We'll be right back with some more tough but fun times, but first, here's a picture tribute from In the Wild, your pictures in the wild. Folks, today, Fish and Affliction gets to honor a loved one from the family. So many of us have such great memories of loved ones that have gone on to be with the Lord, and some of those great memories include fishing. Here's one of those great memories of Mr. Charles Gabbard, with a big old catfish. What a wonderful way to be remembered, a big smile and a big old fish. We send our love and prayers to the family and a little bit later in this episode, you're gonna to get to meet one of those family members, Fish and Affliction Pro Staffer, Bob Rogers. What a great picture of Mr. Charles Gabbard and we'd like to thank the family for sending it to us. Folks, if you have any pictures of you, your family, your friends, your loved ones that you'd like to see here on Fish and Affliction TV or on the website, Please send them to pics at fishandaffliction.com and maybe we can see those pics right here on In the Wild, your pictures in the wild. Kind of like this, all over, like that. And maybe kind of like if you kind of steady, and if you pop it a little bit, you know what? There's no way I'm gonna do that. I believe it's like this. Yeah, it's kind of like this. It's like this. Then it's going like this. No way. Kind of like this. <laughs> the sexy swimmer, it's got action you can't believe until you see it. I'm kind of liking this. Here's a preview of the coming chapter in the summer of 2010. Our first annual bass tournament will be held May 15th with fishermen from eight states in competition for a guaranteed $5,000 cash first prize. The tournament is expecting 250 angler teams. Professional anglers to father and son teams will compete in one of the largest open tournaments in the history of Old Hickory Lake. Our entry fee is no more than your local Tuesday night tournament, just $80 a boat. Budweiser, Robert Orsisco, Riverside Marine, and Anderson Marine have joined in with Blackjack Cove in presenting this incredible tournament event. 94% of fishermen hunt. 100% hunt big game. There is only one solution. Scotty Green Adventures. Hunting the world. Welcome to Scotty Green Adventures. You pick your species you'd like to harvest and contact Scotty Green Adventures for your adventure of a lifetime. For hunters only, brought to you by Scotty Green Adventures, hunting the world. Check out all the great hunts at scottygreenadventures.com. Folks, today we are with Scotty Green and his son Bailey. And Scotty, you told me that you guys are getting ready for turkey season. Tell me a little bit about what you guys do to get prepared for turkey season. Well, during turkey season, we get to ready, and uh, me and Bailey get out there, and we like to spend a little time together and get the food plots prepped, do a little fertilizer. We did some uh, soil tests. We got them out to the laboratories and just getting uh, geared up to uh, get the turkeys in focus and uh, try to locate them and try to 
make sure that we have everything in order so we can hopefully have a successful hunt together. It's a great thing too for a father and son to spend time during this time of the year. The weather's starting to warm up. You can spend some quality time with your family out there. And don't forget to follow the regulations of the Tennessee Guidelines of Hunting to make sure that if you have any bait for the turkey or the deer that everything is up 10 days prior to any hunting of the game that you're after. Bailey, you gonna get a big turkey this year? Yeah. Because you got a big deer? Bigger than any deer I ever saw? Yeah. Jealous. Hey, make sure you go to Scotty Green Adventures, check out all the great hunts. He's got some great turkey hunts that he's offering right now and also got some bear hunts for spring bear, black bear in Canada. He's got everything all over the world. Scotty Green and Scotty Green Adventures and Bailey Adventures right here on Fishing Affliction. Well, after that tough trip down to Tim's Ford, we thought we'd head on down to Alabama to Lake Gunnersville for some better conditions and some better fishing. Well, little did we know about the best thing that we'd see that day was this beautiful sunrise. The conditions were tough, tough, and more tough. We had a frozen drain plug hole in Rusty's boat, so we couldn't put the plug in until that thawed. And then there was ice on the ramp going down to the water. I thought for sure we'd wait but the big dog had other plans and had his own method to launch this boat. Check this out. Now I don't recommend this way of launching a boat, but the big dog was ready to go catch some fish. And today was kind of a special day for us because we had Rusty's son, Luke, in the boat with us. Now Luke can catch those Gunnersville largemouth. Last year, he caught one that weighed almost nine pounds. And I was glad that he was here with us this morning time because his daddy was busy catching catfish. I think you need my red eye. Yeah, he ate that thing, he thought it was real. Back in the shallow water. Yeah, I wouldn't mind putting that catfish in my farm pond. Your farm pond's probably solid right now. <laughs> no, it ain't. Believe it or not, it's got bass in it right now. Does it really? Yeah. What'd you say about that red eye? Don't eat one. Mr. Catfish, my first fish of the day. Rusty Rust, the Catfish King. I don't think that was very nice, Luke. Really. This is a multi-species show. <laughs> <laughs> it's a multi-species when I catch multi-species. <laughs> well, the next time I catch a fish that ain't a largemouth or a smallmouth or a spotted bass, I'm gonna remind the big dog about his rule. And it wasn't long before Luke had on his red-eyed shad what we'd come to Gunnersville for, a nice largemouth. Pretty good largemouth there, Luke. Caught one, caught one, not yet. Good, good red-eyed fish. First gunner's little chunk of the day. He did not have Luke at all. Now, now, do not let him go put him in the box. Put him in the box, huh? We're gonna, we're gonna box up five of them today. Well, you see, the big dog had big plans for us to catch five fish. But folks, the truth of the matter is, we went all the way to Gunnersville, Alabama, and we caught four. Now, this is Luke's second fish, and the rest of the day, we didn't catch a thing until the sun was almost down. And then we caught two more. But I get ahead of myself here. Let's see Luke's second fish. That ain't very nice. The flyer's good. Ah. Front Stole my rod with my bait on it right off the bat this morning. But I'm not complaining. Until you catch another one. Well, after Luke's second fish, 
we tried to move over to some more shallow water that had some deep cuts. But, you know, on Gunnersville, like many of the lakes that we fish, the water fluctuates. And the last time that we had gone to Gunnersville, this spot was two foot deeper than what you're seeing right now. And when conditions change, so don't you. We ducked bridges and got out on the main lake trying to find those Gunnersville largemouth. Along the way, seeing some beautiful, beautiful sights. And in keeping with today's theme, tough but fun, these are the kind of special moments that make it all worthwhile. Getting to see the birds, the muskrat, just God's great outdoors. What a blessing it is to be able to enjoy each and every moment that you have outdoors. And of course, catching a few fish, well that's the icing on the cake. You know what? And it ain't too bad a fish either. Get in here. God, you have no clue how hard this fish was to catch today. <laughs> I finally caught a daggum keeper bass today after 10 hours. <laughs> Has this been a tough day so far? Now I'm hustling, I'm hustling and putting this in the back because of one thing. Oh, excuse me, Luke says he's got a side. Luke, Luke jinxed me, man. Anyway, that makes our third fish of the day. And I did see some other fish come up right there, so I'm gonna keep on chunking right here. Hey, go, man, it feels good to get a bite. Well, finally, I found out what that felt yeah. like. Here's mine. Ooh, he's barely hung, Dan. That one is barely hung. I think he's got it good. But he got it. That's good, big dog. Good job. How about that, huh? Good job. He wanted that purple one, didn't he? That's a nice. good fish. That's a good fish. Ooh. Ooh, man. Yeah. Hey, uh, this, which, which well does this go in? Just stick it in my side, man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Luke, good job. 25 cent fish going somewhere. Let's go get some more. I'll buy him for a dime. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, man. I'm gonna tell you what. If our viewers knew how hard we fish from daylight to dark Brother, today, that sun is just barely, barely over the top of that mountain. May we catch another one in here, man? I told you I saw them group up a minute ago. You sure did. Let's go. Get them. Well, folks, 11 hours, 132 miles, and four Gunnersville largemouth, and the sun is going down. And we're not even on our way back home to Nashville yet. And I wouldn't trade it for one moment. And Luke and Rusty, well, they had a score to settle. Nice fish. Well, we're going to hold these up and we're going to let them go. Right. We're going to let them go. We're coming in. And I'm going to tell you guys, this, this was a, a really, really tough day on Gunnersville. But we're going to let these go right now. Oh, geez, man. Tell you what, that's as tough a day as I've seen out here in a while. 45, 46 degree temperature, man. I am ready for spring. I am definitely ready for spring, man. Ready this for is some heat. I, I know Luke's, Luke's froze. We're One gonna last question. Did you get your 25 cent piece? I did. <laughs> I did. 25 cent son. Yeah, he won today. Well, you see, folks, every time the big dog and his son Luke goes fishing, well, there's a 25 cent per fish bet in the boat. And today, Luke collected his money. He caught two fish, Rusty caught one, he got his 25 cents. Well, what a beautiful, beautiful day on Gunnersville. Tough, but fun. And since we released those four Gunnersville largemouth, let's see what Miss Vicki Porter is gonna be cooking in the skillet. I bet you today it's not gonna be fish. In the Skillet with Chef Vicki Porter is brought to you by Cleepy.com, turning your precious memories into video treasures. 
Welcome to In the Skillet. I'm Vicki Porter and today I'll be showing you an easy way to cook a spaghetti squash. This method came straight from the secret archive files of Mama J. And it is so simple, you just take a fork, poke holes in the squash, and then we're gonna stick it in the microwave for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, you'll know if your spaghetti squash is done, if it's easy to cut with a knife. Cut it lengthwise. I'll scoop out the seeds. After you've removed the seeds, now comes the fun part. And remember, it's gonna be hot, so you might wanna wear a pot holder so you don't burn your hand. Scoop all the insides out into the bowl. Now you've scooped out all the insides of the squash and there's only two more ingredients to add. A stick of butter, and a big pile of Parmesan cheese. Mix it all together. Once the butter and cheese is melted, then this is ready to eat. This is a great side dish that your family will love. You can find this recipe number four on fishandaffliction.com. Hey, what do you think about these? Shaw Grigsby likes these. But Denny Brower looks awesome in these. You know, a lot of people don't know that Strike King is the number one importer of packaged polarized sunglasses in the whole entire country. I've seen Mark Davis wear these, and I like them a lot. They're awesome. But you know what? Me, I have got to have my monsters. The Tournament Trail is brought to you by Fish and Affliction for those who've got it bad. Folks, here's the results of Flipper's first Sunday morning tournament of the year on March 14, 2010. First place with a bag limit of 14.25 pounds was the team of Guffey and Breeden. Second place went to the team of Holland and Hargis with 10.30 pounds. First big fish was Mr. Larry Holland with a 6.65 pound largemouth. And second big fish was Mr. Anthony Guffey with a 4.75 pound fish. Fish and Affliction would like to thank Flippers for supplying the information for this week's tournament trail results. Folks, send your tournament results to info at fishandaffliction.com and it will appear right here on the weekly tournament trail. And all tournament trail results are archived at www.fishandaffliction.com. And now, back to Fish and Affliction. Well, I picked the perfect day to sneak off from Brother Rusty Rust. It is unbelievable weather, 60 degrees, which we haven't seen in Tennessee in quite a while. And I'm picking up Fish and Affliction Pro staffer Bob Rogers, and we're going to the Gallatin steam plant without Rusty. Rusty's may be sitting in the back of the boat at Tim's Ford and in Gunnersville. We've gone 500 miles to catch six fish. Now, when they're hard to catch them, for the big dog, they're hard to catch them. So it ain't no fault of the big dog because he is the absolute one that knows how to catch those fish, and he's proven it time and time again. But I would like to have a bite every now and then. So I'm going to take Bob. We're going to go and just catch some fish. We're going to have some fun, and uh, hopefully the big dog will have to get up and get a pizza or something during this segment so he doesn't see what I went and did. Just teasing, big dog. Well, I am teasing the big dog, but you know what, folks? Sometimes it's good just to go fishing, and it don't matter for what. And anybody who knows me knows that's exactly what I love to do. Now, this is Cheyenne, daughter of Bob and Teresa, and she is also known as the queen of texting. So after a brief hello, Bob and I hit the water to go just fishing. What's the game plan? Well, we're going to head up here to the back of one of these creek channels and see if we can find some warmer water. Uh, hopefully we can get into some crappie or bass or at least find something biting. Do you think we should have Rusty Rust watch some other television show when this is on because there could be there be a jealousy factor possibly Let, later? Let's make sure the one of us got him on the water while this is air. Awesome. Let's make sure. Well, Bob and I did try those creeks, but we didn't have any luck. And Bob, being from up north, knew that we needed to go find some warm water. And if you're on Old Hickory Lake near the 109 bridge, then you know right where to go. Right there at the Gallatin Steam Plant. What a great, fun place to go. This time of the year, there's just tons of bait fish. 
everything's feeding on them, including this blue heron. And it's just a matter of time before you're gonna have a bite on the end of the pole, and that's right, what we came off. for. I think this one's gonna officially count, brother. It's a drum. It's okay, I tell you what. Isn't that awesome? Look at that, man. I tell you what, you know, a lot of people and the drum, they're not too high on the drum, but I'm gonna tell you something. That's Tennessee redfish right there. <laughs> All right, I think that's officially the exact first fish. That's awesome, huh? I like it. Hey, I would take, how many times does a drum save the day? At least once. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, we're going to, uh, let's get the, we'll get the hooks out and then we'll come back to them. Okay. Well, Bob, I'll tell you what, it is good to see the pole bend like that, isn't it? Yes. That's cool. You know, I'll tell you too, in my experience, when you start seeing these fish, I saw this, I think I told you yesterday at the bank. Yes. That I saw a gentleman that was bass fishing throwing a jig. And that's what he hit. What he hit it on your uh, a, a uh, crankbait. The crankbait, yeah, cool, awesome. It was just so much fun to get out with Fish and Affliction Pro staff for Bob Rogers and just fish. And I'm looking forward to future episodes with Bob and learning about some of those northern techniques that have been so successful for Bob. Now, just to let you know, I caught a few fish too, and it just felt so good to have something on the end of the pole. But you know, each and every week. We keep getting hassled by the in the skillet gal, Vicki Porter. And look what happened the other day when I walked down to the bank. V, what are you doing? Oh, hey Dan, what are you doing here? I was just down here fishing trying to catch something for my segment in the skillet. You know, because you and Rusty haven't been bringing me any fish lately, so somebody's got to do it. And you know, this is my spot. Why are you here? Go find your own. Can you believe it? getting kicked out of a fishing spot by the in the skillet gal. Well, tune in next week and let's see what we catch on Fishing Affliction. Fishing Affliction is brought to you by Strike King Lures, Deca Batteries, Kistler Rods, and Bass Pro Shops. Thanks for tuning in this week, and please join us again next week because... Yeah, me and old Rusty's got that fish in affliction. Grab your hats, grab your baits, don't forget your poles. We're gonna fire up that old nitro boat and head to the fishing home. We're gonna try to catch a big one, yeah, that's what we're wishing. Cause me and old Rusty's got that fish in affliction. Yeah, me and old Rusty's got that Fish in affliction! Yeah, yeah. Man, and we've got it bad.